Paulie lost the bet. Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh showing up in khakis, although Paulie claims those aren't game day khakis. Is that what you're saying, Paulie? You're the journalist. Ask Coach Harbaugh if those are game day Michigan khakis. Coach, would you wear those on game day at Michigan? Uh, Paul is correct. Uh, They're not game day khakis. Wow. 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 Nobody. Sarah, Sarah bought these khakis for Go me. blue. These are- nobody, nobody knows khakis quite like you do, Paulie. Well done. Well done. That was all we wanted fancy to talk to you about. These are fancy khakis. You know, those are your, those fancy are getting ones. dressed up. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? How amazing is it that wardrobe took off like that? That people were fascinated by what you wore. Well, most coaches wear khakis. It's. Uh, I know, but what, what what does that say about us that we were people were you know fascinated by your clothes uh, or your lack of style? I guess. I think that was the big one. I, you know, I, people make quite a bit of sport of me because I, I like to tuck in sweatshirts. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was the. <laughs> Did your dad do that when he coached? No, uh, I don't. Yeah, I, probably. Yeah, I mean, that's it's just it always seems to me that that's the the way to go. I think especially in the uh, when was it? Maybe the late nineties, the first of the two thousands. You know, everybody would w- had the shirt untucked. It just uh, it seemed like it looked sloppy. It looked uh, no people. I mean, it was it was it was hip. It was cool to to, to be untucked. And uh, I just kind of figured I'd, I'd go the opposite way, you know, throw rocks at the beehive and, and tuck my shirt in when everybody else was, was untucking. Uh, I told you the story about your dad. Your dad was priceless when he came I in. I can picture it. I can see it. I've seen it. I've seen it a thousand times. He, Patrick? Yeah. Harbaugh. <laughs> <laughs> but was he like... I didn't even have to be there. <laughs> was he like that at home? Oh, yeah. Everything. Uh, growing up was... Uh, both parents <clears throat> made everything exciting. Everything uh, was 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 fun and enthusiastic. Uh, you know, you got dropped off at school, <clears throat> my brother and I, and my dad would say, "Grab your lunches and and attack this day with an enthusiasm <laughs> unknown to mankind." <laughs> and then he'd say, "And don't take any wooden nickels." And, and How off, old were you? Five off years old. <laughs> off we'd go. You know? yeah, yeah, you know, first grade. John was in third grade, and uh, you know we. Sure. There was uh, there was there was times you know we we um, we didn't have a lot of money. My dad was on assistant coaching salary uh, at the time, and we we didn't own a car, but uh, we had a dealer car, uh, Ann Arbor car dealer. They had an extra car. They would they would let the the families use the car, and so if my mom was off grocery shopping or something, you know we'd walk out of the house and, Dad, there's no car here today. No car today, man. We're <laughs> walking. <laughs> Grab a basketball. John, you grab one. I want 100 with the left, 100 with the right. <laughs> Who's got it better than us? <laughs> nobody, Dad, nobody. We get to walk and dribble the ball. So it was, it was, it was, a, it was lively. You know, it, was, it was energy. Did he turn you into you? I mean, we're... Yeah, yeah, so many ways. Uh, you know, he, he has just been always one of the, the people in my life that... You know, I've always just done exactly what he's told me, exactly how, how he told me to do it, uh, over and over and over, and, and just keep having having success. It 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 seems like a good template, gonna gonna stay with it. But if you look at how you approached playing quarterback and how you approach coaching, any mm-hmm. different? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's 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 a lot of differences. Uh, uh there's playing. I mean, you're you're out there. You're you're competing. You're uh, physically competing coaching you're an advisor you know you you teach it's more of a teacher you, you're telling people what to do how to do it demonstrating the times uh and then you let them do it and then you tell them what they did right tell them what they 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 could do better and and then let them do it again it's uh it's um you know it's not the it's not the you're not the rock star you're the kind of the roadie you know you're not you're not dan patrick you're yeah. the yeah. you're the advisor but can you be too intense could you be too intense as a quarterback, too intense as a, or competitive as a uh, coach or quarterback? Well, I don't think you could be too competitive. Um, you know, talking to, uh, uh, no, I don't think you can be. I don't think you can be too competitive. Uh, where are you going with that? No, I'm just curious yeah. if you sometimes get over your skis and try to do too, like you, <laughs> like I want to beat you so bad that I get out of my comfort zone. Or if, you know, you're coaching, like, I'm going to try to outsmart you and I'm going to do something that maybe I wouldn't normally do. Yeah, I mean, there's times you can, you can definitely try to out, outsmart people and, uh, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Sure, there's, 
there could be instances like that. But I think uh, it, it, being too competitive, that's not resonating with me right now. I think that's a that's a daily thing. I mean, you're getting up every day. You're attacking the day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind and, and trying to be better. Really, I mean, it really comes down to that. I mean, you're trying to be better today than you were yesterday, better tomorrow than you are today. And the theory that that improvement will lead to success. I mean, I think that's where the, you know, the competitive mindset is and, and uh, you know, at least in our family and, and, and most people. I mean, uh, and it's not always so much about having to beat somebody else. I mean, it is a lot of times, but, uh, you know, the main thing is you're trying to get better yourself. You know, you're trying to, trying to improve your own game or improve your own team. He's Jim Harbaugh joining us. Uh, National Signing Day was fun. Yeah. Competitive. Fun. Fun. Okay, so how do you get a hold of Jeter and Brady and say, I don't know what you guys are doing, but you could you come in today? Yeah, well, Derek Jeter, he's uh, from Jackson, Michigan. Uh, he's got the Players' Tribune. Uh, we wanted something that was going to be a, a a celebration on signing day. And, uh, you know, his his Players' Tribune uh, streamed the, the whole event. Uh, Tom Brady, Jake Ryan, former Michigan Football players were there. We had uh, people of excellence, Ric Flair, <laughs> uh, John Harbaugh. Uh, people, uh, you know, there's a celebrity atmosphere, but there was also this this Michigan atmosphere that uh, in Hill Auditorium, the the big house of the of the arts, and you know the drum corps, the cheerleaders, uh, you know, uh, actors, comedians, uh, people that I thought everything that was Michigan professors, academics was on display. I mean, the diversity and uh, doing things at the highest level, I thought that was what really, to me, when I, when I left that, that, uh, the auditorium, well, we really, we were, I think we really showed that. You know, and everybody left with a smile, and, and uh, it, was a, it was a heck of an event. But you had the college experience, then you go to the pros, but to get that college experience back, you don't always, always have that in the pros. I know Pete Carroll tries to do that with Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, how much fun, how much did you miss that where you really have control of everything and the camaraderie there, the spirit that's there with the colleges, uh, college players as opposed to the pros? Well, I, I, think, um, I think Pete has it right. I think there's, uh, you know, college uh, many college programs have it right. High school programs have it right. Junior football has it right. Uh, football is a hard, rough, tough sport. Uh, and you have to work extremely hard. But let's have fun doing it. And if you can keep that, that, that mindset, uh, then I think, I think it makes your team better. I think it's, it's, uh, it's a better atmosphere to be around. I, and I think everybody enjoys it more that, that way. Is that more of your personality? I like to have fun. Yeah, I like to have laugh. I like I like to be around people that make me laugh, and uh, uh, sure, it's a lot better than being around the people that are doom and gloom. You know, you yeah, you, you know, you see that guy, you see that guy walking down the street, and he's got the you know the dark rain cloud o over the top of him. Yeah. I mean, you'll you'll jet to the other side of the street to 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 be away from that person. So, is there unfinished business with the NFL? Uh, no, there's just new business. Uh, you know the way. Uh, way I look at it. Because uh, Pete had unfinished. It felt like there was something more that was there. John Calipari may go through this at Kentucky to go back to the NBA. So I don't know if you felt like I got there to the Super Bowl. Is there part of me that says, eventually I want to try that again? I've never looked at the unfinished business uh, thing. I mean, it's just, it's, it's new business. It's proving something for a new time uh, uh, in a competitive way. And for anybody, whether it's, uh, whether it's Derek Jeter or or Michael Jordan or, or Pete Carroll, people have done it at the, at the highest level. I mean, even though you've done something a thousand times, uh, now you're doing it again. And that's, that's all that matters is, is, is what you're doing right now. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the unfinished business thing has never really resonated with me. It's, it always feels like there's a new game. There's a new, there's new business, you know, win the next game. That's the goal. Did it feel strange landing in San Francisco, being back or seeing people or, Oh, we come back, uh, Sarah, my wife and I, we, we still have a home here and uh, um, come back four or five times a year. So I we enjoy the, the Bay Area. We like the Bay Area. A lot of, a lot of signature moments here. Coached at Stanford for, for four years, coached uh, with the 49ers for four years and uh, had 
three children that were born here in the Bay Area, so uh, still have still have a lot of friends and, and good memories here. Uh, tell me uh, what you're talking about today with the uh, Colgate's uh, Save Water program here. Well, they got a great spot. First uh, time Colgate has had a, a spot in the Super Bowl, and it's coming right before the two-minute warning, which would be a heck of a good time for it. The message simply is uh, conserve water by shutting off the faucet when you're brushing your teeth, and we can all we can all uh, uh, would all resonate with us. But the the fact and and it's been good to par- partner up with with Colgate on this is let's say f- four gallons, you know, four gallons of water. You know, if you brush your teeth for two minutes, uh, that's how much you can save. And per person, per person, yeah. you know, trillions. If everybody, if everybody shut off their water when they're brushing their teeth, it'd be trillions. So, and you look at what's happening in Flint, Michigan, right now, with Flint, their Mich- water supplies. Yeah, you know, uh, that's a good point. Or California, or uh, a place I go every single year for several years is is Peru. Uh, you know, you you understand how valuable water is. Yeah. And um, every drop counts. The website is colgate.com slash every drop counts for more on that. Uh, Urban Meyer, I hear, leaves the water running when he brushes his teeth. I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying that, Jim. I, just sort of, Paulie, can you confirm that? Jay Glazer reported that. Jay Glazer reported that. Yeah. Urban Meyer lets the water keep running. Uh, McLovin, do you have uh, Jim Harbaugh's McLovin. draft All comments? Right. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is actual draft profile comments okay. when you came out of Michigan. So go ahead and go ahead and read them. Okay. Jim Harbaugh is. Well coached, a winner, hard nose. He's intelligent, a coach's son. Harbaugh is not a finished product. Will take time to be a starter. Strong arm, lacks ideal mobility. Will only uh, uh, will rely on intellect more than talent. Has to be in the right situation. <laughs> Exceptional ability at reading situations and uh spotting secondary receivers huh. that's not bad not bad at all <laughs> <laughs> did they did they exaggerate did they exaggerate whoever the scout is is just <laughs> very he's, good he's one heck of a, <laughs> yes paul i can't he's lie. got great taste coach i can't lie to you is. we were scared to put anything bad out there we were scared of what you might do <laughs> a, a strong arm i've never heard, i really never i haven't heard that one too much but i'll take it Let's get this one. Is, can I take this with me? Yeah, you can. This yeah. Is, Drew Brees took his with him, yeah. but they, he wanted to use it as motivation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would you? I'm would, flattered. <laughs> I, can I ask you a favor before you leave in the commercial break? I want you to be a coach to one of my Danettes here. Okay. And, and what I want you to do is convince him that he needs to put his face in a pie for the good of the team. All right? It's a running bet we have. Uh, his name is Seton O'Connor. He bet Fritzy. He took the Patriots. Fritzy's a Bronco fan. The loser had to take a pie in the face five consecutive days. Uh-huh. So all you need to do is tell that little guy right there, Seton O'Connor, that he needs to do it for the team, for morale, to be a winner, and do that during the commercial break. Can you, are you capable of doing that, Coach? That's, a, that's an easy one. Oh, I love it. All right, so when we come back, Coach Harbaugh, Patrick Harbaugh. He's going to convince Seton O'Connor to put his face in a pie for the betterment of this team because it's all about team. We'll continue with Jim Harbaugh right after this on the Dan Patrick Show. 